It's now been eight months on the road, and I get asked at fuel stops and campgrounds, uh, on ferries and in grocery store parking lots, what is it? What is this thing all about? They, of course, are inquiring about what has now become affectionately known as the Big Orange Puppy Dog. And like our smaller furry friends, this beast attracts a ton of attention. And of course, I'm referring to the Mercedes Unimog and the custom-built Overland Expedition trailer that's in tow behind it. Today, I'm going to answer what this ultimate Overland slash van life monster RV setup is all about and go behind the scenes and take a closer look at the inner workings of this very special machine. My name is Michael Ladden. I am currently driving more than 220,000 miles around the world in my 1979 Mercedes Unimog and custom-built Overland Expedition trailer. This is my story. All right, today in part one of my Overland Expedition rig setup, I'm going to talk about the vehicle side of things. Now, in my case, I am driving a 1979 Mercedes Unimog U1100 416 Doka. Whoa, what does all that mean? Well, let's back up a little bit and say and answer a couple questions that people ask all the time. What exactly is a Unimog? Well, Mercedes started producing this particular vehicle in 1948, and they still make it today in 2021. And there's a couple features that kind of make a Unimog a Unimog. The chassis, uh, portal axles, they're coil sprung, they have torque tubes underneath to protect the drivetrain, uh, high visibility cabs, uh, it's a cab over design, uh, PTOs to run all sorts of things because municipalities would buy one truck and it's kind of a tractor, but it could drive on the road. And it does, you know, street sweeping, uh, backhoe, plows, snow blowers, uh, work on uh, train track infrastructure, all sorts of stuff like that. And that's kind of what a Unimog was. Now, I bought this particular truck 15 years ago, and in its former life, it was um, avalanche control unit up in Switzerland. I brought it over from Europe, uh, and over the years, I've done a bunch of modifications on it uh, to bring it into sort of what I'm going to call the 21st century of technology-wise in the cab, but most importantly, I've turned it into what I consider to be one of the ultimate overland expedition vehicles. And today I'm going to kind of show you a bunch of features that I've changed, upgraded, and uh, set up so that this truck has the capability pretty much to go anywhere and go anywhere, anywhere around the world. Let's hop up inside the cab and take a look at some of the things that make this truck unique. Now, from the factory, Unimogs are pretty spartan, and inside can be awfully loud. So over the years, I put a ton of insulation in it, uh, carpeted it, uh, put custom Recaro seats. The center console has features such as satellite radio, Sirius XM, uh, the CB, and an aviation headset unit. And through that unit, you can listen to your regular radio, satellite radio, CB, or even your cell phone. Engine noise has been reduced in the cab through a custom engine tunnel cover and ample amounts of insulation throughout. You'll notice that the inside of the cab is kind of using the aviation slash nautical theme. The cab is finished with tiger maple wood and overhead there is ample amounts of marine grade lighting. I made a custom mount for the ARB refrigerator behind the seats and it's a quick grab to get uh, Gatorade or water while you're on the run. On the heads up console in the front, I've got an iPad, I've got the rear view camera and the Garmin Overlander 
uh, so you can do your navigation. Conveniently located behind the passenger seat is the MPPT controller for the solar panels on the roof, as well as the 24 to 12 volt DC converter and the fuse blocks for both 24 volt and 12 volt. For advanced cellular communication, I have a WeBoost antenna, um, and it typically boosts uh, cell coverage usually by one or two bars no matter where you're at. There are 16 USB ports located uh, conveniently around the cab for plugging in phones and various other electronics. And a quick little story on the seats. I actually drove 8,000 miles across the Western Sahara and Africa in my old Land Rover with those seats. And I found that they were so comfortable, I decided to put them into the Unimod. The truck has a 2300 watt military uh, grade inverter uh, for producing 110 current while on board. I custom designed a overhead switch panel and those mostly control the exterior LED lighting uh, and the auxiliary lighting on, uh, on board the vehicle. Here you get a closer look at the uh, CB radio and the aviation uh, headset unit. You'll notice all the mounts that I use inside are from a company called Ram Mount and they're all adjustable uh, on track so you can slide things back and forth, add or delete as needed. I made custom mounts for the Recaro seats uh, and they do have the ability to slide front and back uh, as well as have lumbar support. And this uh, Unimog comes with a 24,000 pound hydraulic winch, and these are the uh, levers here that control the operation of the winch in the back. There's a valuables safe on board, and under the rear seat is a diesel powered uh, auxiliary heater, uh, which actually heats the cab, the battery box, and the engine block. Little features like LED puddle lighting enhance the interior, One of the first things you'll notice is the massive tires on this beast. They're Continental 36580R20 tires and they stand 44 inches tall. The truck has onboard air for inflating tires and running air tools. The core of the electronic setup comes from the dual battery system, which features a Blue Sea battery cutoff and shutoff system and it also has a battery tender, so when you're not using the truck, you can plug it in to maintain both the house batteries and the start batteries. Our custom steel-framed aluminum-skinned rear storage body gives you ample room to store both camping gear and the 82-gallon water tank. The truck has its own hot water shower system with an Instanon hot water heater, PEX plumbing, and an outdoor shower that can also be used as a car wash or to set up uh, for an outdoor sink. Also, if you're off the grid, this truck has a 24 volt pump system that can draw water from any freshwater source, such as a lake, a river, or a stream. There are secure mounts for two onboard 20 pound propane tanks as well. And the house batteries on board the Unimog are two lithium ion Battleborn batteries. A massive 24,000 pound hydraulic winch is mounted on the rear of the vehicle. All exterior lighting has been switched to LED, including the headlights, uh, all of the auxiliary work lamps, and all of the interior lighting as well. Also note the custom brush cage, which we designed to mount the lighting, solar panels, and various antennas and accessories. 
There's 110 watts of solar power on the roof, and this is great for running the refrigerator and any other auxiliary equipment on board the vehicle. For those moments when you really need a horn, this truck is equipped with probably the loudest air horn system in the world. I custom designed a 60 gallon diesel tank, uh, so it increases the range of this truck to probably right around 700 to 750 miles. On the diamond plate roof of the rear of the truck, there's four Thule bike mounts, a storage box, and the mount for the Solo stove. On the front of the truck is a storage box where I keep all my tools and fluids, and the box is easily removed if you need better approach angle while off-roading. This truck is equipped with a Mercedes workhorse diesel engine. It's the OM352 inline six-cylinder turbo diesel. It's 5.6 liters and produces about 175 horsepower. One of the interesting things to note about this engine is it's actually somewhat easy to get parts and to get it worked on around the world because its prevalence of use in both marine applications and in generators. I had Jay Couch of Couch Off-Road and Engineering in Denver, Colorado upgrade the turbo system on this truck about five years ago and in order to do so we lifted the cab by about two and a half inches. Underneath the vehicle you can see the portal axles and torque tubes and the coil sprung chassis. This truck has what they call super fast axles. I swapped out the gearing in both the differentials and in the portal axles for slightly higher gearing which is better suited for the road but certainly doesn't take away from any of the off-road performance. This Unimog has six forward speeds, two reverse, and it has air actuated four-wheel drive as well as an air actuated front and rear locker system. All right, folks, that is a wrap on the walk around portion of the Mercedes Unimog. But stay tuned because I'm going to give you an in-depth look at both inside and outside the Overland Expedition trailer in part two. Um, I'm going to leave you today with a couple user submitted questions because I get a few of these on the road quite often. So I'm going to answer them right here and now. Does it float? Um, no, <laughs> it does not float. Uh, it can go in some deep water, but it's not a duck boat. Miles per gallon. I get asked this question quite a bit. The answer is about 12, which is better than a lot of RVs and certainly big trucks out there. Uh, what is the top speed? Top speed with super fast axles in this Unimog is about 65 miles an hour. Um, realistically, with the tire size and everything else, I, and pulling the Overland trailer, I would say I average between 45 and 55 miles an hour most of the time. Why is the winch in the rear and not in the front of the vehicle? Quick answer to that, if you get this thing stuck, you best be going backwards. How deep have you gone? Hmm, roll the video. Is it comfortable inside the cab on the road? Uh, quick answer to that, it has air assisted brakes, it has power steering, uh, and it, it has coil springs, so it rides okay. The seats are uh, Recaro, they're comfortable. Um, I'd give it a not bad for a 42 year old truck. Last question, how high is it? The answer, 11 foot, eight inches, and no, I know sometimes you look at it and I get I get this a lot from people thinking it's too high to get under bridges and whatnot. Uh, typically uh, in Europe and, and in America, 13 feet, six inches is about uh, truck height or maximum legal limit. It's well under that. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two, the Overland Expedition trailer. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the truck and tree symbol to your right. Once again, thanks and hope to see you soon.